We're here in, in the Capitol with some illustrious past members of, of our chamber. Uh, obviously, current member uh, T.R. Rowe representing Trumbull, Ms. Mara Vance, who was a past representative and a longtime first selectman of Trumbull. And we have Eleanor Wilbur, who was the past uh, representative representing Fairfield, uh, as well as Ms. Julia Bronder, who is a longtime advocate of Alzheimer's respite programs and this is the purpose of why we're here. We're here to begin a discussion to raise awareness on the importance of Alzheimer's respite program that the value that it has not only to the patient which is suffering from Alzheimer's but also the caregivers and the importance and the value of all that. But I, I will defer to Eleanor to begin the discussion in her perspective um, on, on you know the Alzheimer's respite care program. Well, when I was in the legislature, my husband came down with, I guess that's what you have to, how you have to say it, with Alzheimer's disease, and that's why I left the legislature, and I became a full-time caregiver. It was, it's the kind of caregiving which is, I think, unless people have been through it, have, they have no idea. But I had to lock my, my husband into the bedroom at night, for example, so he could pace and I could sleep. And, of course, you don't get much sleep that way. So the respite care program is really a program to give a break to caregivers, in particular with people with dementia. That you could you could offer it, I suppose, for a lot of other problems too. And uh, we, Julia and I, Julia also having she'll, she'll tell you her story. But uh, uh, we went to uh, Senator Genario in Norwalk and asked him if he would. Um, if he would sponsor a bill on the respite program, because we were very aware of how many people were out there, so having this really, really major problem, and many of them not eligible for any other program, and he immediately responded that he would support it. And uh, I think uh, then, then we, the more we looked at it, we went to uh, Mark Ryan, who was then the officer of the management and budget, and he said, "Well, it must save money." And took it to the governor, and that was. That, that really was how, how, how the whole thing began. But its intention is to relieve the caregiver and thereby offer better home service to any patient of Alzheimer's or dementia. Well, Maura, you, you mentioned that you chair or um, served on the board of the Visiting Nurse Association. When we talk about respite care and that kind of care that's so important, um, what did you see the importance? Where do you see the importance of respite care? It was a lifeline. People who assume the care of someone suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, whatever you care to call it, become prisoners in their own home. They became 24-7 caregivers. If it's your spouse, you end up bathing them, you end up washing, you end up dressing them, you end up worrying that they're going to leave the house without your knowledge and not be found because they will wander. Respite care allows the person, the partner, the spouse, who assumes the care of their loved one to have a little bit of a break so that they can breathe, they can have a little relaxation, and they can get away from the terrible, terrible burden that they've accepted. And most of them will not give up that responsibility and if they won't give it up, then the best we can do is to help them by allowing them to have some time to themselves. Very important. Well, I think as we learn through Appropriations Committee and through Eleanor and Julia, that, that the incidence of, of health failures for caregivers are extraordinary high. Do, do, do you know the particular numbers and, and share some experiences? Of the, uh, caregivers and the pressure, and, yeah, the, the pressure. and the difficulty that, that you confront. Well, um, I, my husband was an engineer and um, I was teaching at a local university when he came down with um, dementia, which turned out to be Lewy bodies, which we didn't find out then. But he went downhill extremely quickly. He was fired from two, two jobs consecutively when he had he had three degrees and was extremely well qualified, but he came to me one time and he said, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. And I knew that by the December 
1991 he was not going to be able to carry on any longer and he was indeed fired just after the Christmas party. It took me nearly four months to get him diagnosed and then after the diagnosis he went down. Within 18 months he could not feed himself, he was incontinent and he could not speak much anymore. Well, I had to give up my job too, so there were two full-time incomes, and I'm getting to the point of the respite care program, the two full-time incomes disappeared, and since we were both way under 65, there was no program, town, state, or federal, to help us financially. And um, I could not get away, and I, it was a desperate situation, and I had three kids in college at the time, and I had monstrous fees to pay. I had one child in New Zealand and I had one out in a doctoral program on the West Coast and one up in Ithaca. And suddenly, no income and no health insurance because the COBRA ran out. And I thought, what am I going to do? And I, it, it, at that time, I approached the Alzheimer's Association and finally I became involved in public policy and in my fifth year chairing the Public Policy Committee, our group, including Eleanor, got this program together. And miracle of miracle, with a lot of hard work, we got the program passed. Now, the, the idea is, if you get so desperate that you are at the end of your rope, emotionally, physically, and psychologically, with caregiving, you are inclined to put your loved one in a nursing home much earlier. Now, at the time, my husband, he finally had to go into a nursing home, but had there been a respite care program available to me at the time, I might have kept him out a few months longer. Now, the amount, of, amount that a, a person currently gets for respite care from the state program is 3, 000, up to 3500 a year. That's less than the cost of one month in a nursing home. Unless. Much less. Much less. In fact, it's almost half for, for a year of respite care from this program. You are it, about two weeks of a nursing home cost. So obviously it, it saves money to the state. And it's a very cost-effective Well, I, I think that is a very key point in, in this day and age where we're confronted with such fiscal constraint. Um, and, and what really led me to be more aware of this issue was um, a year and a half ago, Eleanor gave me a call and, and educated me about the value and the importance and the economic benefits of the rest of the program in the sense that you are spending good money yes. to save more money. And, and it is this reason why you're up here in the Capitol and, and we were able to save the funds last year from the governor's cut and in no small part due to Representative Rowe and, and his efforts and his commitment to understanding the importance of the respite program. How did you learn about it and, and what are your thoughts on it? Well, Representative Rowe. Thank you, Representative Moore. <laughs> and it is, it is neat to be here with uh, so much institutional knowledge, um, but it's an issue that, uh, you know, it often isn't at the front of our policy debate here, but one would be hard-pressed to find uh, a single program that does so much good uh, for the relative uh, small investment that the state makes, makes it. And if ever there was a penny-wise and pound-foolish uh, Proposal it would be to uh, to cut uh, the rest of the program. You hear a lot about trying not to shred the safety net. And what is government's core function? Well, government's core function is to take care of those that can't take care of themselves. And I think that the recent past has grown that safety net unnecessarily. There are people who can take care of themselves, but don't and therefore it's, fall, it's fallen upon the government. Now, these are people who through no fault of their own cannot, and not just 
the victims aren't just those that, that suffer from it uh, directly. It's the families, as we've, as we've discussed. And if in a you know, $20 billion annual budget we can't find uh, the money to properly fund it, then why the heck are we here? And it's, um, it's very frustrating that, that this is always, this seems to often be an area where we, we think we can nickel and dime. And we ought to stop trying to extract the nickels and the dimes, uh, be serious about helping these people uh, who truly form, uh, you know, they're in the middle of the safety net. Uh, and we can't abandon them, and I don't think we will. Certainly, we won't. Um, I, I think, I'm hopeful that the governor and the, the legislature in general will, uh, will pay the attention and give the, the respect and, frankly, the monies that are, that are due this problem. And, and, and for me, it's important to have this video, to be able to share with a broader audience. For this simple reason, the unsung heroes are you and you, who are the caregivers, who give, as more I put very eloquently, because they want to. Um, and and, and at, at times, they're at wit's end. And, and I think it was Eleanor who shared with me, why don't you have more presence up here, I asked. And Eleanor said, because we are far too busy caring for our loved ones. We can't take a day to come up and testify and advocate like you have just done today. And it is incumbent on us to share that with people, to make them aware. And, and you're too exhausted. I think the way you educated me was not simply through words. Because for you to say that you were tired, that would be a daunting task. And, and you were. You said, I'm just too tired to come up to testify for something that is so important. And that is the reason why we're here to advocate. And, and truly, you are all the unsung hero. And our hope is there's so many other out there that can't speak. The first year that we, uh, we brought this bill in, uh, we had a woman who testified who had been uh, out of her house three times in the last two years, twice for eye surgery and once to come here and testify. She was, she, she was, was taking care of her husband. She was legally blind. blind. Three times out of the Three, house for the whole year. For, for two years. Was two, two years. years. Yeah. And twice for eye surgery and once, for, once to testify here. She felt so strongly about the rest of the I mean, that, it, it's an amazing. You know, and it's, the other point is... But the, but, the, but the victim of Alzheimer's or dementia can't testify unless it's in the very early stages. Uh, you know, they're in, incapable of doing that. So the, when you have volunteers to come and talk about a lot of things, they're the people who are actually dealing with it. But with Alzheimer's, they're not the people. They're usually the families that come. I was just lucky to be young enough at the time that I could once, but by the way, my husband did go into a nursing home and had to go on to Title 19, which meant all my assets had to be spent down. And um, I can only say it was an extremely tough time. But Title 19 costs the state a tremendous amount of money, whereas the respite care program is such a small sum in the total budget. So we would like it to be much more money than it is, but we are very happy that we got that amount through. Now, for people who want to get more information, where can they reach out to and, 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 and how they, can they get this information online? The best place to, to talk to and telephone is your local AAA. There are three area agencies on aging, uh, three, there are five in the state. They represent, they're, they're in certain districts and they are the ones who manage that money for respite care. And when you need that kind of help, they are very definitely the place to call. Triple A. The AAA area, 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 area. Not, not, not the car. Not the roadside okay. assistance. Okay. Because right. that's kind of important, right? Well, it, yeah. But it is so it's the area agency on aging. And they're in the phone book. And uh, they are they, they are the ones who handle the money and distribute it. They also have some other Sorry. resources for other problems. And right? for, for, say, they, they will often understand where, where transportation can be got to go for kidney dialysis or that kind of thing as well. So they, okay. they are very... Um, home health aids. The home health aids. They know, they know a lot of things that can be done 
but you you have to get in touch with them or or At or the, you don't you know that's it. You know? General and another general number would be the Alzheimer's Alzheimer's Association, Alzheimer's Association in Rocky Hill uh, will be very helpful. They have a helpline. If people are desperate, they can call and be put in touch with the right um, program or help or just advice that they need. They have a lot of brochures and legal help. They have, um, will tell you, you know, that's one of the important things to get in place. If you have someone with dementia, especially if it's your spouse, to get your finance, finances in order, the Alzheimer's Association will help you with the legal problems involved with the disease. And even, I think, uh, give you advice about which doctors deal particularly with the disease, yes. psychologists, psychiatrists, and, and uh, medical doctors, all of them probably need to be involved in the care of the patient. And the area agency is also capable of doing assessments. Yes. They will come into a home and assess the needs right. in the home and help tell people where they can get these services. And in many, uh, Many times they're able to recommend or provide services to assist people in the home. I'm noticing that daycare centers are being defunded, but that was a big help for my husband in the early stages where he could still be with people. And um, they, they, they were just a tremendous help. And the Alzheimer's Association will uh, direct you to a group that you can go to at the time of day that suits you, day or night, when you can get away, and they will uh, they will give you a list of groups in your uh, your particular area of Connecticut. Support groups. Support groups. Yes.